it's the beginning of May and of course that means lanterns, rubber lips and of course the elusive rock cards that always come in at this time of the year. Um, basically what it is, and this is my personal opinion, I think it's more a time where the lanterns and that actually come in to breed. They come in from the deep reefs uh, to the shallows to actually spawn in that. Um, I'm going to be doing a trace that I use a lot of and has been extremely successful for catching them and it has proven to be by far one of the best traces that I've done in a long long time. What we require for them is very simple uh, 27 kilo maxima and the reason we use it it's a very hard line so fishing in the rocks obviously for lanterns and that and uh, rock salmon um, this line is most probably the most abrasive line that we have. Um, not too expensive, it works extremely well. 25, which is going to be one of my hook snoots that I use and I'll show you as I'm going along. And of course, the glow in the dark floats. Very, very important for catching lanterns. They've got a very big eye, they're very visual. And of course, giving that little bit of bling in the water attracts the fish. That's a stop sign for catching lanterns. Big secret. Um, as far as hooks go, because it's a double hook trace, we use 5-0s and 4-0s. These are our tuna circle hooks. They're silver in color because we're using white baits. Of course, there's a lot of blacktail around at this time of the year. Chocker bait being the most preferred bait for catching them. And I'll show you how to bait it up as we go along. Um, sinker wise. This is one of our bell sinkers that we use. But very importantly is we actually flatten it. And the reason being is you're pulling the actual trace into the rock. Once you can feel the rock, you stop. This shape seems to come to the surface a lot quicker. You don't get stuck as easily. Um, definitely for fishing in rocks, that's the shape and style of sinker that we use. Very, very important that. Um, we've got some sleeving that we use. Again, it just adds a little bit more bling um, to your actual bait that you're making. It glows a lot better. It also protects your hooks, uh, the knot, when you're snelling. And I'll show you when we're actually doing it. Um, it glows, it gives a glow through the actual bait. When I rig it, I'll show you how that works. Very, very important, that one too. Of course, our Corda Anti-Tangle Free Sleeves. Uh, just for preventing the knotting of the actual line when you're actually using it. Very important on the top hook more than the bottom hook. Um, I'll go through that and show you. We're using two different size uh, swivels, 5x4 uh, and 4x5. Am I right in saying that? 4x5 uh, and 5x6. Okay. Um, the bigger one on top, the smaller one at the bottom. Simple as that. And I'll show you as we go along how we do it. Our pair of braid scissors to cut the nylon, cut braid, very, very important, works very well. That's a mustard product. I'm using a very soft, supple line. Um, very important for that as far as the top hook snoot goes. It's 27 kilos, soft and supple, a lot more movement. This will be used on my top hook. Okay. And I'll show you and explain to you as we go along why I use this one here. Okay, to start the trace. Twenty-seven kilo maxima. This is going to be the part between the two swivels, and it's not long. It's about maximum six hundred, so it's very very short. Okay, there we go. One five by six power swivel, which is going to be the bottom one. The top one's going to obviously be the bigger one, and that's the four by five. Remember when tying that the big R goes to your braid or to your leader, and the small one goes down the line. So basically, that's what we're doing. So let's tie. Start with the bottom one, it's just so much easier. 
And it's lovely, you can sit at home, watching TV and tie these traces using a figure of eight. All my knots are figure of eight today, except for when it comes to snelling the hooks. Open it up, there's your figure of eight. Pull tight and just slide it down. And again, like I say, remember it goes to the big R of the hook. Use my mustard scissors there and just cut off the tag end. 600 in length, so it's not longer than that. Go through there. One, two, three times. Back through. And if you want to see how I tie that knot, some people say I do it a little bit fast. There is other ASFN YouTube uh, videos that I've already done to show you how to tie a figure of eights that are slowed down so you can actually see it a bit better. So let's just pull this and make sure it's tight. There we go. So that's the entire length of the trace as far as the two hooks go, uh, two swivels go. Next, tuna circle, 4 0. We'll take one of them out. That's going to be my top hook. And the 5 the bottom hook. The bigger bait on the bottom and the smaller bait on the top. The bigger tuna circle, which is going to go on the bottom, I'm using the Maxima 25 kilo. And all we do is snell it. It is very simple to do. I'm just going to do a figure of eight over it. One, two, three times, pull it through, out. And then what I do is I just open it up very slowly. There's a figure of eight or the snell over the top of the hook. Pull it tight. Use your scissors there, just give a bit of tension on it. Cut the tag end off. And you can see it's very hard. Now I'm going to use the softer nylon, as you can see it's a lot softer. I'm just going to cut a piece of that off. Okay, again, doing the exact same thing. One, two, three times around. Back through the back of it. And we just open it slowly like that. And there's the figure of eight formed there. Pull tight. Stick it in your scissors. Give it a good pull, cut off the tag end. And if I compare the two, you can see how the one is a lot softer than the Maxima one. This is the double X shock leader, and that there is the Maxima. You can see it's a lot more springy, a lot harder. And the reason we use this, this one's going to give a lot more movement. This is going to be our top hook. Okay, so let's go through it. Uh, I've got all my stuff here. Now, grab two, one, two of our little glow-in-the-dark floats and one of our centro tubes out. Okay. You'll see on the centro tube one side is thick, the other side is thin. All we're going to use is the thin side. So we cut it there and we then cut it again in half. Okay. We take our tube, stick it through, and pull it all the way down onto the R and over the R towards the knot. So we're just gonna go like that until we get to where the knot is. And that's all we're doing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our chocker that we're gonna beat and actually put it around that. And this will actually glow through the actual chocker, the soft piece of chocker that we use. Okay. Next step, our float, our glow in the dark float. And we just push it down. Okay. So there is our first one done. Repeat the whole process again. 
with our four o hook push it on until it gets to where the knot is and you can actually see how it's already turning in nicely glow in the dark foam through and there we go okay now quarter anti-tangle free sleeves just to stop any of it from tangling up in the water through the R down like that there's the first one done second one a lot harder to find the hole in this one there we go, sticking it through, obviously the thin side down, thick side up and that basically moves the actual line away from the swivel, stops it from tangling up. Okay, <clears throat> top hook is going to be our 3-0, soft supple line and it's not going to be long, it's only going to be about that length. When I'm finished, so let's do that. One, two, three times. There we go. Figure of eight. Like that. A little bit of lubrication. Slide it down your line. You don't want to burn your line. Cut that off. Take our quarter anti-tangle free sleeve and we just slide it up and over the hook. And there it is there. Okay, so you can see where it's sitting now at the moment. Okay, just over the swivel, over the R. Okay. The bottom hook. I'm going to go with this one. Go through the R. We're going to make it slightly longer than what we did uh, the the top hook. We're going to make this one a lot longer. Give it a lot more movement in the water. In figure of eight, pull tight. Slide down. go get the tag end off take our quarter anti tangle free sleeve again slide it over the actual knot always just better to just give a bit of lubrication to it it just works a little bit easier and there's that one. Okay, so this is what the trace looks like so far. Looks like this. Okay. So what I've got is your leader going off the big R, your swivel in a straight line. And people always ask, why do you tie on this one and not on that one? For this particular reason, that if it's lying on the ground, I'll just use the Maxima one. There's your trace lying, the person standing over there, the line's coming along over here. This one, because of the flotation, you want to have it moving like that. That's why we tie off of the arm part. Usually, when we're fishing for bigger fish, we'll have it coming off of the straight eye in one straight line. So that when you're pulling, you're in a direct pull. These fish aren't that big, five kilos, four kilos, and the pressure put on that swivel is minimum so like that there's a lot more movement okay like I say for shark fishing we'd have it actually coming off of that one our hook snoot coming off of that one okay just a little note there okay now for the end part which is basically our sinker part I'm just going to use some um, Maxima again Sixteen kilo maxima. Okay. 
18 kilo maxima it's up to you if you're using thicker maxima just tie a couple of knots in it Figure of eight. Okay, it's not going nowhere. You make the sinker snoot just slightly longer. You don't want it to be too long. And the reason being, if you're fighting a fish, what happens is your sinker will drag below the actual fish and you've got a very good chance that you might end up uh, getting snagged in the rocks with your sinker that's dragging behind the fish. We're just using a figure of eight to attach once again. And just another little trick, one little granny knot just in the front. So if you do get stuck and you don't get stuck that often, if you do get stuck, at least this part of it here will break and you can still attach a sinker once again and carry on fishing. So, like I said before, what happens is if you hook a fish over here, a lantern fish, and he's swimming here and you're pulling, the sinker can get caught in the rocks. Okay. Just remember, that little uh, knot there is more to assist you if you do get stuck, that you can actually break off. Okay, so guys, once again, I'll just explain this to you. That part will be moving like this. That's why we tie on this part of the actual swivel. Okay, so it's doing that, it's moving around in that style. Okay, this is the completed trace. The only thing I would do now is I'd add a leader, 27 kilo maxima, about a meter in length. It just gives you more rubbing ability. So if you're fishing over a rocky ledge, at least you've got a chance of getting that lantern or that rock card out of the, uh, the water or over the rocks before your braid leader gets here. Braid leader is very expensive, maxima is very cheap. Okay, so that's basically what the whole trace at the end of the day looks like. Okay, and I've been using it and it works like an absolute dream.